Welcome everyone uh, to the 17th talk in our International Philosophy Talk Series. By the Department of Philosophy at Marmara University here in Istanbul, Turkey. We are honored to have with us today Professor Gabor Boros from Karoli University of the Reformed Church in Hungary. Uh, Gabor Boros has been a professor of philosophy at Karoli University since 2018 and was previously at Ötvorsluren University in Budapest. He has various academic administration positions as well, such as the president of the Hungarian Philosophical Society, also the president of the Philosophical Committee of the Hungarian Acad Academy of Sciences, and the president of German-Hungarian Philosophical Society. He also served as the vice dean for scientific and academic affairs at Ötvorsluerand University in Budapest. His research interests cover a wide range of topics, including French philosophy, history of philosophy, philosophy of the history of philosophy, philosophy of emotions, history of German philosophy, early modern philosophy, Descartes, Spinoza, Leibniz, philosophical concepts of love, ethics, and history of ethics. He has written numerous books and articles, edited volumes, and also written translations of major texts. His publications are mainly on the philosophy of love, ethics, Spinoza, Leibniz, and Descartes. Today's talk is entitled Contrasts for a Quartet of Philosophers, Dilton, Heidegger from the perspective of Georg Misch. Before I leave the ground to Professor Boros, I'd like to say that we are actually honored to have him here in Istanbul. Seminar also tomorrow at Marma University on the Göztepe campus at 3.30. And tomorrow's talk is entitled Avenues from the Written Ethics Back to Spinoza Unwritten Philosophy. So if anyone is interested, we'll be happy to see you tomorrow at Marmara. Professor Boris, thank you again for participating in our Philosophy Talk series. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for the uh, uh, invitation from the, for the uh, friendly uh, introduction. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here and uh, uh, to continue uh, cooperation tomorrow and hopefully later. Uh, 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 and we'll see, perhaps uh, you uh, will uh, the chance to come to Budapest uh, uh, and, and also uh, Professor Jonas and other colleagues. So that's, that would be great. Uh, yeah, um, my, yeah, in fact, my, my last uh, or latest, uh, latest book publication was uh, a book on Georg Misch. Uh, uh, Georg Misch uh, uh, published uh, uh, almost 4,000 pages uh, uh, as volumes uh, of uh, history of autobiography. And my book was uh, uh, titled uh, Georg Misch and the uh, Autobiography uh, because I, 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 I have been in fact in, interested in, in the narrativity. So this is one focus of my thought, narrativity, narrative identity, and, uh, and the, the, um, the other topic uh, belonging to this uh, circle of, uh, of, of uh, topics. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and, and then, then I, I uh, closed this book with, uh, with a promise that in a second volume, I, I will treat uh, Misch's uh, critique on uh, on Heidegger, Husserl, uh, uh, from the point of view of, uh, of a systematized deal time. Uh, but I I I have not yet written this second book, and the, and so this this text what I, I I am going to to present you. It's a, it's a starting it's it's one of the one of uh, several starting points or. Parts, parts of this, uh, I hope, uh, 
uh, a book that I, I hope will be uh, written and, and published in one or two years. Um, so the contrast, uh, it's, it's perhaps a, a little less uh, usual title for a, for a philosophy talk, but contrast is a uh, title of a famous uh, uh, work of Béla Bartók, uh, uh, the, the Hungarian componist, and, and that's why I, I thought uh, uh, it could be, uh, could be uh, good for, for, for title. Um, Yes, so let me start. So my, my lecture will focus on a peculiar constellation within German philosophy in the first half of the 20th century. During two decades, such uh, world famous thinkers as Dilthey, Husserl and Heidegger seem to have been of equal rank with Georg Misch, a thinker who does not play any relevant role in today's philosophy. In that period, they all uh, wished to renew philosophy and all, except for Husserl, wished to carry out this plan by way of hermeneutics, practiced by the exegetes of secular and sacred texts to be transformed into a philosophical discipline. Today, none of them, except for Misch, needs to be introduced among philosophers. Born in uh, uh, 1878, he, Misch, became a dis disciple of Diltai to become later his son-in-law as well. As the successor of Husserl, he held an influential professorship in Göttingen. After his return from his forced exile in England during World War II, his only aim and hope that survived were to complete the volumes of a history of autobiography he started to elaborate on in the uh, 90s. Because of this tragic development, his own philosophy has not been put forward in systematic treatises. Except for some lecture manuscripts, it has to be excavated, so to speak, from his early approaches to the philosophies of Dilthey, Husserl, and Heidegger, sometimes affirmative, sometimes critical. The most important publication to be used when attempting the excavation is his book titled Philosophy of Life and Phenomenology, uh, in which he tried to criticize Heidegger's way to combine Dilthey and Husserl in his being and time. My lecture will focus on some of the arguments of this book, especially on how Misch tried to criticize Heidegger and Husserl while acknowledging their general importance in philosophy and at the same time to defend Dilthey while acknowledging that his approach to metaphysics falls short of legitimate expectations. I will also refer to the correspondence between Dilthey and Husserl in 1911. The part of the intensive exchange of ideas between our thinkers that was accessible to the broader public at that time was a series of long reviews or better meditations of Misch about Heidegger's being and time, his publications in the following years and who says formal and transcendental logic published in 1929 as well. The horizon of the meditations was Misch's enormous knowledge of the history of philosophy, especially Platonism and Pantheism. The complete title of the book is Philosophy of Life and uh, Phenomenology, an exchange of ideas between the direction of Dilthey, Heidegger, uh, and Husserl, Lebensphilosophie und Phänomenologie, eine Auseinandersetzung der Dilthey'schen Richtung mit Heidegger und Husserl. This title is somewhat unusual insofar as it's in it two proper names, Heidegger and Husserl, are connected with the general designation Direction, Richtung, attached to the proper name of Dilthey. Uh, a philosopher who passed away almost two decades ago. 
since in reality, it was the author of the book himself who attempted to initiate an exchange of ideas, we can see in this rather unusual title, the expression of usual modesty on Michel's part. One of the reasons for his modesty is that the publication of Being and Time signified for him much more than just a milestone in philosophy. That it was an important milestone, he acknowledged in the text several times, in the book several times. What he saw as the most important in Heidegger's book was the combination of Husserl's phenomenology and a version of the philosophy of life. It was not difficult for him to realize that the philosophy of life part did not so much originate from Diltai's own writings as from the correspondence between Diltai and Count York von Battenburg, a close friend uh, of, of Diltai, who was a businessman, not a, not a philosopher, but Diltai uh, appreciated uh, this friend of him uh, very much, uh, also in philosophical uh, uh, respect. Uh, so it was not uh, Dilthe's own writings that were emphasized, uh, but rather the, the writings of and ideas uh, of, of this Count York von Wartenburg uh, was uh, emphasized. Misch was a disciple of Dilthe, and so his aim was quite understandably to combine the two most important movements in contemporary philosophy. The first impulse to this enterprise was Husserl's criticism of historicism in his famous article, Philosophy as a Rigorous Science, Philosophy as Strenge Wissenschaft, and as a consequence of it, the correspondence between Dilthey and Husserl. He must have considered himself the other philosophical self of Dilthey, and so he must have felt almost personally offended by Husserl's criticism. For him, Heidegger's book was an uh, imperfect implementation of the task of the combination because his preferred author was Kant von Wartenburg. So he was certainly convinced that the perfect combination would, would be the one in which Husserl and Dilthey are the main representatives of their directions. This must have appeared to him as the task of his life, to construe a new philosophy based on the synthesis of Dilthey's philosophy of life and Husserl's phenomenology in order to have a more stable, more down-to-earth, as it were, uh, system than Heidegger's synthesis neglecting Dilthey. As for the background to the whole history of the quartet of philosophers, it is of some importance to recall two peculiar events from the period before being in time, when Misch was already a respected professor, even the dean of the faculty in Göttingen, while Heidegger, assistant to Husserl, applied for an extraordinary professorship there. Misch had at, this, at his disposal uh, Heidegger's book on Don Scotus, as uh, uh, Heidegger's book on Don, Scott, Don, Don Scotus, which was the Habilitation uh, the, 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 the book uh, prepared for the habilitation uh, for Heidegger, as well as the manuscript containing uh, the phenomenology uh, analysis of Aristotle that are now, today, widely acclaimed. But at that time, it was not published, not yet published. In spite of his positive expert report, Misch's conclusion as Misch as rector and at the same time, the respected philosophy professor. So Misch's conclusion fell out rather negatively. Heidegger was granted second place after Moritz Geiger. Uh, a similar event occurred somewhat later when Husserl wished 
to prepare the way to habilitation for Edith Stein, his assistant at that time. He asked Misch if it would be opportune to adopt the project in Göttingen. Misch's reaction was negative. One can raise the question of whether Husserl's earlier attack on Dilthey in his philosophy as a rigorous science may have played a certain role in these refusals. It is more probable, however, that other factors were in play. Howsoever it may be, Misch must have been highly motivated to write a review on beginning and time. On the one hand, uh, uh, on the one motivated to write the review on the one hand, and on the other, to publish the review as a leading figure of the disciples of Dilthey, precisely in the book to be presented to Husserl on his 70th anniversary. However, the review was much too long already in the first phase of its elaboration. And so Misch was unable to contribute in this way to the creation of a peaceful atmosphere needed for a kind of collaboration. It was in the journal called Philosophische Anzeiger that the first uh, three parts of the review appeared. These three parts make out the two third of the book to be published later. After this first publication, Misch's project became more complex due to Heidegger's works published after 1927 and the publication of Husserl's formal, formal and transcendental logic. In light of these new developments, Misch felt the need to somewhat rethink his standpoint and revise his review. He added to the original parts a collective review about Husserl's logic and Heidegger's Kant and the problem of metaphysics, what is metaphysics, and uh, 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 about the essence of ground, focus <laughs> and the uh, And this, this, this letter was published in the Husserl Testament in that uh, book prepared for Husserl, uh, Husserl's anniversary, uh, uh, where uh, Misch was unable to publish his uh, review. As a conclusion, Misch tried slightly, as a conclusion to this fourth part, Misch tried slightly to criticize Dilthey's ideas in light of his interpretation of the newly published works. These four parts constitute the book published in 1930. The second edition appeared a year later, which attests to its favorable reception. It could certainly have been the starting point of a, a fruitful public exchange of ideas with Husserl and Heidegger that could even have modified Misch's views or modesty and rendered him willing to put forward his own philosophy, liberating himself from the tutelage of Dilthey. Unfortunately, the consequences of the National Socialists' rise to power excluded that kind of free exchange in manifold ways, one of which was Misch's being forced to retire and go into exile. When he returned to Göttingen after World War II, that fruitful philosophical exchange was no more possible. After his death in uh, 1968, uh, a third edition of the polemical book was published with a short but important appendix of Misch contributing to our understanding of Husserl's and Heidegger's informal reactions from the period when the political and philosophical situation did not yet worsen. Certainly, Heidegger could have come back to the objections and remarks of the, of the book he could have visited Misch, uh, with whom he had been in an at first sight friendly correspondence. He failed to do so, however, and today one can suspect his motives for this failure. 
Before talking about the book itself, it will be useful to have a look at the relationship between Dilte and Husserl, the basis of the relationship between Misch and Heidegger. Dilte and Husserl arrived at philosophy in opposite ways. Dilte from the humanities, Lutheran theology, and historical scholarship. Whereas Husserl from mathematics and logic. This circumstance had almost pre-programmed the conflict of their philosophies, which came to the fore in Husserl's above-mentioned paper in 1911, especially in its polemical part against the relativism of historicism. Dilthe, who was die to, uh, who was die soon, who was to die soon, was deeply deceived. He respected Husserl for the publication of his logical investigations, Logische Untersuchungen, 1900. He believed the criticism could only have originated from a superficial acquaintance with his ideas. It is difficult to say if he was right in this. That is, uh, basically, whether uh, philosophy is to be approached and cultivated from the historical systematic standpoint, or from the mathematical, logical concept of science, if what is at stake is avoiding relativism. This question was in the air already before 1911. Dilthey, 25 years senior to Husserl, although apparently considered the historical systematic approach the only relevant one, published an appreciatory review on Husserl's logical investigations. After that, they also met personally, a meeting that gave strong impulses to Husserl to compose the ideas pertaining to pure phenomenology and to a phenomenological philosophy in 1913. But at least according to his letter to Misch on uh, the uh, 27th June 1929. Notwithstanding this, Husserl launched the, 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 the frontal attack in 1911 on what he called historicism and philosophy of the worldviews. Uh, this was part of the philosophy as rigorous science article. And uh, their relationship became almost hostile. Husserl emphasized the idea of scientific philosophy, of which he meant to discover two important enemies, the naturalists, to whom he objected the distortion of what constitutes genuine science, and the philosophy of the worldviews, because he maintained its representatives renounced the scientific approach to philosophy. Dilthe replied to the objections on the 29th June 1911, maintaining that he saw the basic task of philosophy in the development of a general theory of uh, knowledge by way of analysis belonging to the logic and philosophy of language. He knew that uh, referencing historical facts must not be confused with asserting an objectively valid statement. And what is more important, he was convin convinced that his manner of analyzing, uh, analyzing the worldviews in historical scholarship does in no way lead to relativism. The metaphysics is impossible, this was his firm view. But this conviction is not to be based on the historical plurality of metaphysical systems debating each other, but on systematical investigations. In any case, Dilthey denied decidedly that we could ever come to an objectively valid metaphysical system of the world by way of pure conceptual analysis. He attributed to Husserl precisely the effort to develop this type of metaphysics. Husserl tried to appease Dilthey. He dropped the reproach of skepticism. At the same time, he took the anti-metaphysical statement of Dilthey 
personally. To ward it off, he distanced himself from a special kind of metaphysics, but not from metaphysics in general. I quote uh, Husserl's answer. It seems to me that what you are fighting against as metaphysics is not the same as what I concede and endorse as metaphysics. Every science of a domain of what is, this is, this is, this is my uh, translation from the German. Every science of a domain of what is, for example, science of the physical nature of human mind, etc., becomes transformed, eo ipso, into metaphysics, according to my concepts, says Husserl, as soon as they are uh, referred to the phenomenological doctrine of essences and uh, from its sources, they receive the final explanation of meaning. That is, the final determination of their truth content. All natural cognition of a dom domain of being leave a dimension of the problems unresolved from the solution of which depends the final definitive determination of meaning of being and the final ev evaluation of the truth that we have already gained in the natural attitude. So this is roughly the well-known Husserlian approach to philosophy and the particular sciences, phenomenology and the particular sciences. He, Husserl, outlined the kind of metaphysics refused by both of them. I quote Husserl again. This excludes every thing in itself metaphysics relying on Kant in the same way as it excludes every ontological metaphysics a la Spinoza that produces science of a domain of being based on a system of pure concepts. Shouldn't we see in all of them or form the same, asks uh, Husserl. And naturally, con he continues, the impossibility of a metaphysics, so he said, in, in, in that false, especially ontological sense, can only such an analysis, uh, can, can only put on display uh, uh, such an analysis within the human studies. Uh, 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 closes the, uh, the, the passage. So, um, so there is a, a sort of metaphysic uh, that is impossible. Uh, in, in his view, the, the old uh, style metaphysic of, uh, of Kant and Spinoza, uh, but there is this phenomenological metaphysics that he himself uh, endorses. Uh, and and he, he, he maintains that this is a a legitimate use uh, uh, of, of, of metaphysics. And, uh, it is difficult to decide whether this initiative of identifying or formed Kant, Spinoza, and other ontologies is a statement of a systematic thinker not much bothered with historical correctness or the conciliatory statement of a philosopher who ignores the details for the sake of coming to an agreement. In any case, the conclusion of the letter could hardly, hardly have been more conciliatory, I quote this conclusion. Although we have come here from different studies, we have been determined by different historical motives, different developments, what we strive at and investigate belong together harmoniously. The phenomenological elementary analysis and phenomenological analysis on a ground scale taken by the hand of the morphology and typology of the ground cultural formations that you discover. So these are the two directions uh, of philosophy that go hand in hand according to this conciliatory statement uh, of Husserl, end of quotation. In his answer, Dilthey raised no objection against this peculiar mix of systems of rather different structures, as Kantian and the Spinozian, of course. 
he accepted the peace proposal. He concluded that they would go into the battle against the dominance of natural sciences shoulder to shoulder to lay down, I quote, to lay down the general foundations for the real sciences against constructive metaphysics, against uh, everyone who supposes and in itself beyond the given reality. End of the short quotation. We can be certain that this gesture of reconciliation was meant on behalf of the whole circle of the entire circle. Misch's unique philosophical groundwork, his uh, book titled The Way into Philosophy, a philosoph philosophical primer, the Weg in the Philosophy, and a Philosophische Fieber, published in 1926, that is a year before being in time, begins its first part about the basic metaphysical character of philosophy, symbolically with quotations from both Dilthey and Husserl. So because this belongs uh, to, to Michel's modesty that I mentioned at the, at the begin, beginning, uh, that this book, The, the Way into Philosophy, uh, is, which, which, which should, should have been in a, a systematic uh, exposition of the original philosophical position, uh, it, it took the, the form of a, of a primer, of an elementary book with, uh, with many, many quotations, many, many long quotations. So the structure of the book is that we have uh, one, two, three long quotations, and then uh, shorter or longer commentaries uh, by Mish to these quotations. And this is the way he uh, wanted to uh, uh, explain his, his ideas. And, and this is the book uh, I, will, uh, I, I will refer back uh, somewhat later when uh, 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 analyzing the arguments of, of the uh, review book. Uh, on uh, sorry, he he quoted from which philosopher? Sel Heidegger or uh, he quoted he, he quoted from 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 all sorts of uh, philosophy and and, and religious uh, thinkers because his uh, his position was that that philosophy must be uh, uh, seen and understood in a global way. So not just uh, in, in the European way, as we know it uh, from the Greek heritage, uh, on the basis of our Greek heritage. Uh, he himself went to, uh, to, to a journey to, to China and, uh, mm. and Japan, mm. uh, not long, so it was a short, uh, relatively short journey, but, uh, but, uh, but, but he, his, his uh, 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 conception was that, uh, that that philosophy started in somewhere in, in Asia and and, and went uh, 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 for for hundreds of years uh, from Asia through uh, Babylonian uh, to Egypt and from Egypt to, uh, to, to to Greece and so the Greek philosophy was not an absolute beginning of philosophy it was just one sort of, of, of philosophy uh, uh, to, to which uh, one, one has to uh, reckon the Indian philosophy and the Chinese philosophy. So, so he, he was convinced that, that, that philosophy in a global perspective would mean uh, uh, European, uh, Indian and Chinese philosophy. And one of the uh, tasks of, uh, of, of today philosophers is to, to, to explain why uh, we uh, take uh, uh, philosophy exclusively in the Greek sense and, uh, and what, what happened uh, in, in the Greek, uh, uh, in the, in the Greek uh, uh, antiquity that uh, determined this term uh, as opposed to, to Chinese and, and Indian uh, thought. That he uh, um, he thinks uh, until uh, 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 he, he thinks they uh, uh, 
uh, developed uh, in the same uh, 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 pace, pace, uh, pace uh, so to speak, until Socrates, until Socrates' age. So then, uh, but from Socrates on uh, and Plato on, uh, uh, there, there, there was a turn in, in, in Greek. In Greece, and so that 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 was the reason why he involved uh, uh, Indian and Chinese uh, quotations. So uh, Confucius, Buddha, uh, and Buddhist uh, thinkers, they uh, found their way into this uh, collection of quotations and commentaries. What is the book? This way into philosophy. So this this is yeah. Is it? Is it the answer? Yes, yes. It... Uh, later I will ask a question concerning this topic. It's really okay. interesting. Okay. okay. Please. Yeah, yeah. But so the, the, the whole book started with the a, a Utah and the Husser quotation. And this is what I mean symbolically, the, the gesture, the gesture of, of peace uh, and the promise of uh, collaboration with uh, Husserl and, and, and the Husserlian philosophers. They intended to show that far from excluding the, the perspectives of uh, the two thinkers complement each other. This fact is the more important, if this, this fact is the more important, the more it is true that uh, Dilthey's philosophical pre presence in the years between 1926 and 1930 was largely due to Misch, who presented Dilthey's scattered ideas systematically, preventing him from being forgotten as several of the contemporary German academic philosophers. Husserl, uh, uh, I mean, in, in 1927, Husserl was already in retirement and compared his situation with that of Lilthai wrestling with his piles of manuscripts. Misch may have felt he was right when refusing Heidegger. Uh, his situation in Göttingen would have become much more difficult had Heidegger published Being and Time as his colleague in Göttingen. He may have seen his future career as promising. He must have believed that his book of collective reviews diffused, as it were, the explosive content of being and time. This would also lead to a change in the atmosphere. The subsiding admiration toward Heidegger would go hand in hand with the uh, philosophical community's hope for the presentation of his, of Misch's, own way to combine the Dilthian philosophy of life and Husserlian phenomenology. It could have been the second volume of the primer promised at the end of the first volume. And now it is time to turn to the book itself, uh, the, 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 the phenomenology uh, and philosophy of life. Uh, asking questions such as how he diffused the explosive stuff of Heidegger, that is his, com his combination uh, of the philosophy of life and phenomenology, neglecting duty. Let us mention first that Husserl's general reaction to the book was the acknowledgement of Misch's merit to have concentrated his efforts on the essential points. But what are the essential points? How did Misch treat them? And why did Husserl and Heidegger refuse to recognize their respective philosophies in this treatment? What conceals itself beyond the word essential? And finally, what did Misch have to offer instead of what he criticized in uh, Husserl and Heidegger? To put it briefly and in general terms, Misch deepened Dilthey's objection against Husserl's cultivation of metaphysics. He was convinced that in the final analysis, the phenomenological reduction led to the platonic sphere of essences, and he believed this was also true for Heidegger. 
already in the title, Being and Time, he discovered a double tendency. <laughs> On the one hand, the use of the term being made indubitable for him, for Misch, Heidegger's uh, engagement in the Platonic tradition of the investigation of eternal truths, whereas, on the other hand, the decoded, he decoded, Misch decoded the word time as referring to the philosophy of life that refused the point of view of eternity. Moreover, in Misch's view, the Platonic tendency implied in being was given much more emphasis than the tendency of life implied in time. This kind of asymmetry he evaluated as a relapse into the real ontology. He believed that in the final analysis, both Heidegger's fundamental ontology and Husserl's phenomenological logic were successors of traditional ontology uh, traditional ontology. So that type of ontology Husserl, maintained, uh, Husserl claimed to refuse, to have refused in his uh, letter to Dirtheit. His deception was even deeper in Husserl's case than in Heidegger's, insofar as his new way to combine the philosophy of life and phenomenology was meant to take the form of logic, similar to what he saw in Husserl. His own logic would have been a logic of life, a logic preceding the natural sciences and the humanities that is equally applicable to us. Uh, is it okay, my, my, my voice? And, because I, I got a message that my it's function okay. is It unfair. went fine. It's okay. okay. Thank you. If we recall Husserl's answer to Dirtai, it in no way surprise us to learn that he did not accept Misha's diagnosis of his relapse into a real ontology. Having appropriated the transcendental way of thinking, he said, Husserl said, he did not have any interest in a real ontology more. Uh, I quote uh, a, letter from, a letter from Husserl to Misch. In what followed, uh, after he appropriated the transcendental way of thinking, in what followed, uh, and this was already the case by the time of the publication of the ideas, says Husserl, the formal logic and uh, every real ontology lost their own original interest for me, as opposed to a systematical foundation of a doctrine of the trans transcendental subjectivity and mainly as intersubjectivity, end of quote. Despite this un unambiguous refusal, it is worth the effort to have a clear look at Misha's reproach of a hidden Platonism as the sign of a concealed interest in the pre-critical ontology. Misha's book is not homogeneous. The different parts introduce different critical perspectives, and the objection of a Platonistic ontology is the critical leitmotiv in the first 30 pages. In what follows, I will analyze uh, this light motive on the one hand, and what and what Misch offers as an alternative ontological basis on the other. Plato's name appears first in section one, in which Misch analyzes the title. As already mentioned, Misch believed to discover here a hidden reference to the traditional opposition between eternity and life in time. Being hints at the Greek tradition of Parmenides, Plato, and Aristoteles, within which the basic question of philosophy is directed to the being as being. Methodologically, this tradition relies on the foundational knowledge gained by pure reason. Time, on the other hand, becomes connected with the contemporary tendencies of the philosophy of life the roots of which he discovered in Augustine's turn to Christianity on the one hand and in Fichte on the other. 
Therefore, the respective traditions of being and time are for him so much opposite that in his view, the philosophy of life is directed from the beginning <clears throat> against every kind of philosophy that um, considers being the central topic of philosophy. So philosophy of life is against ontology uh, or metaphysics. And vice versa, he also believes that Heidegger avoided the expression life and replaced it with the term Dasein precisely because he returned to the original latent platonistic ontological final goal of philosophy. It is in this sense of the return or relapse that Misch interpreted Heidegger's original program as an attempt to work out the phenomenological concept of time as the transcendental horizon of the question of being. Misch's problem with this program was that he interpreted Kant's critique of reason as a cesura within the history of philosophy as the rejection of the, an ontological logic based on the concept of being. Being. Precisely this was the background for his determination of the task of philosophy as the task of a logic oriented toward life instead of the logic of the Greek tradition oriented toward being. In contradistinction to it, he interpreted Heidegger, uh, Heidegger as a thinker who insists on the ontology despite his acceptance of the philosophy of life. He believes that this double tendency unfolds in the work in such a way that Heidegger, on the one hand, grasps and what grasps the inner structure systematically, and what to apply it as the foundation for every existential interpretation of Dasein. So that the main thing is the existential interpretation the uh, interpretation of Dasein, the interpretation of Dasein, which is uh, referred back to being, to Zion. On the other hand, although Misch is aware of the unfolding of a rigorous ethical ideal within and as a special core of the existential analysis of Heidegger of the being and time, this is as what could be conceived as a substitute for the interest of philosophy of life. Nevertheless, he refuses to regard it as an autonomous problem within fundamental ontology because Heidegger's main goal was to come back to the question of being. This identifies a, a typical argumentative pattern in Heidegger that he also regarded as a symbol of the ontological turn or return or relapse. He withdrew. This pattern follows a neoplatonistic argumentation, the characteristic trait of which is that it considers the modification anyway from a principle, at least quasi-transcendent, primeval phenomenon. For this very reason, uh, it qualifies them as degenerations, degeneration, uh, and it is here where we are given a hint at the alternative stance in the shape of an alternative argumentative pattern. It is of great interest because it also flashes the alternative ontological model of Dilthey and Misch I have referred to earlier. The alternative pattern is discovered the principal primeval phenomenon not in an in, not in an at least quasi-transcendence, but in a dialectical manner in the very way itself as its imminent ground. Pantheism is the short form for the alternative, for the alternative ontological stance, and we will come back to the significance of it as the alternative ontological model for Dilthey and Misch. Before that, let me mention that Misch was an almost ideal reader with excellent hermeneutic skills, capable of reflecting on the influence of his own intentions on the result of the interpretation. 
So he could reflect upon his procedure and state that he overemphasized somewhat the ontological trait in beginning and time. Notwithstanding this, he insisted on his reconstruction of uh, Heidegger's fundamental ontological orientation as a consequence of his very problematic preliminary decision. So Heidegger's problematic, but for Formish problematic preliminary de decision. He was convinced that this decision for ontology as the goal of philosophy led to a sphere equally far from the philosophy of life and phenomenology. Misch seems to have uh, followed Husserl in this respect, although in another respect, he wished to strengthen Heidegger's tendency to discover the point of departure of philosophy in what permeates our everyday life without being in the centrum of our attention. This is what he calls I put the immanence of the transcendent, and he believes that the platonizing expression being not at all appropriate as the name for it. There is a characteristic argument of Misch for this thesis originating in his global perspective, so in this global perspective on philosophy I mentioned earlier. He maintained that the problem of being was not a natural ingredient of philosophy as such. It appeared only in the context of the Greeks to become the most important problem in Parmenides. This is the problem which the philosopher arrives at after his questioning has led him out of the troubles of everyday life and which can and must be treated by the methods of our discursive rationality. In opposition to this, the most important problem of philosophy in Chinese thinking is the management, carrying out things. Uh, Walten is the, the German term for this. In Indian thought, it is the liberation of the spirit, mind, by knowledge. So no, 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 no talk of, of, of being, not, not neither in Chinese nor in Indian thought. Consequently, it is far from uh, necessary to think about being as the final aim of philosophy as such. Precisely for this reason, Misch thought Heidegger could not have accepted the Parmenidian decision for the philosophy of being based on reason as a starting point without further ado. On the one hand, Misch cites from Heidegger that being for him is only a formal indexical expression, the content of which should be determined only later. On the other hand, he is of the opinion that the whole enterprise of being and time cannot break out of Husserl's concept of philosophy as a rigorous science, that is an autonomous science built on itself as a purely rational enterprise. His own alternative, uh, Misch's own alternative starting point that he had learned from Diltai would have been the orientation to the concept of a Wirkungszusammenhang, oh, this, this, uh, the German word, the connection of, the connection of uh, uh, efficiency, connection of uh, effects, let's say connection of effects, which let the historical and the systematic permeate, permeate each other at the same time rooted in the philosophy of life. Misch approaches the problem of fundamental ontology from the uh, philosophy of life, and so he considers it static, the fundamental ontology static, despite its Heideggerian starting point in the existential analysis that aims at the dynamic of the Dasein. So he, he, he maintains that uh, Dynamism is uh, a feature of the philosophy of life, whereas the fundamental ontology, uh, in the way Heidegger uh, uh, approaches it in, in, in being and time, is static, orient, oriented in, in, in being instead of uh, becoming. So sein instead of werden, the German terms on that. 
From this perspective, Misch would also have expected Heidegger to render dynamic the concept of truth. The way to do this would have been to harmonize the originally Aristotelian, Husserlian, theoretical, metaphysical concept of truth with Dilthey's historical concept of truth belonging to the philosophy of life, which is the truth of the science of worldviews expressed in religion, metaphysics, and literature. It is here where Misch involves pantheism expressly as an alternative ontological position. He did not, re he did not refer to Spinoza, however, as we would expect. He referred to Schell Schelling, and he quoted a passage from his investigations concerning the essence of human freedom, the Freiheitsrecht. As opposed to Spinoza, Schelling was a thinker who connected the doctrine of um, immanence with that of personality and freedom. And this is what makes him more important to Misch than Spinoza. But though we cannot hear ideas concerning pantheism and those of Spinoza, an interesting sign of it can be found in the way he confronts the principle of immanence within pantheism with the principle of transcendence. The former means for Misch roughly the doctrine that in uh, the final analysis, the sole source of everything that emerges out of the stream of life is life itself, even if what has emerged can be acknowledged to possess some limited autonomy, irreducible in its totality, to layers that emerged in earlier phases. Misch recalls and refuses the contrary principle of thinking, be it on the presupposition of the transcendent origin of everything, uh, in a way which is quite similar to Spinoza's and then the, the later young Hegelian's radical formulations. I quote, if we do not wish to take refuge in the creation from beyond, and so. Similar to Dilthey's immanentist papers that have their target in both philosophy and religion, Platonism in philosophy, Christianity in religion, which also opposes both together when he emphasizes his own uh, immanentist principle, the organic historical phenomenon of maturation. This was a quotation. Following Dilthey, Misch also uh, uh, believes that the great cultural, spiritual, and scientific ac accomplishments of humanity do not form a per perfectly autonomous sphere in the sense of some Platonic ideal realm originating in some transcendent being, even though they are distinguished realms of human activity. According to Dilthey's and Misch's construal of the historical development of philosophy, this basic accomplishment of the human mind appears first within everyday life when people discover, or rather tacitly, or perhaps uh, inadvertently, presuppose a kind of transcendence that they thought to be understood as something imminent, projected onto some illusionary reality beyond this world. So it was a little bit compl too complicated sentence. So uh, Dita and Misch uh, 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 um, reconstruct the, the development of philosophy in a way that that philosophy uh, uh, appeared uh, when people uh, of everyday life uh, 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 somehow uh, uh, thought that, that, that there are, uh, in a religious way, of course, that there, there, there are some transcendent uh, beings uh, influencing their life. So this was the, uh, the beginning of philosophy, uh, according to Dilthey and Misch. But, uh, but people at that time uh, was mistake, were mistaken. Yeah, so uh, because according to Dilthey and Misch, there is no transcendence. The, 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 the presupposition of a transcendence in those people who started philosophizing uh, was uh, only an illusion. Uh, and so uh, at the beginning of philosophy, they 
uh, diagnose a sort of illusion uh, which they, they wish to correct uh, by way of uh, reducing all sorts of uh, 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 um, concepts of the transcendence to uh, this worldly phenomena and this worldly ideas to an immanent uh, worldview. In later periods, the scientific disciplines should eventually develop from philosophy as the most fundamental accomplishment of humanity. So this is what happened in, in Greece, in fact, in the, in the ancient Greece, uh, that, that the scientific philosophy uh, uh, started uh, to be uh, endorsed. And, and this was what uh, distinguished the, the European philosophy from the other types of philosophy in China and Indian, according to Mish. Now, to round up our narrative with absolutely no claim to have exhausted the rich argumentation of Mishu's book, let me provide you with a glimpse of the way in which Mish made use of the concept of an immanent transcendence in his somewhat more systematic passages. In the center of this usage, we find a characteristic concept, that of the unfathomable, das Unergründliche. In several passages, Mish makes use of this concept of the unfathomable as a device to provide the human sciences with a solid, secularized, pantheistic foundation. The theory that describes how this foundation works could have played the role of a secularized metaphysics connected to a theory of cognition he missed in Dirtai in his faint critic on his doctor father, one can find in the final part of philosophy of life and phenomenology. He was lucky enough to have a disciple, I mean, uh, say Mish was lucky enough to have a disciple who was willing to collect his Mish's scattered remarks from the unfathomable, similar to his own role, Mish, Mish's own role as a collector of Dilthey's scattered remarks on systematic issues. Josef Koenig uh, was the name uh, uh, of this disciple who reconstructed Mish's concept of das unergründliche unfathomable as the inexhaustible immanent principle of life. Koenig published a short book titled Georg Misch der Philosoph, uh, Georg Misch der Philosoph, Philosopher, in which section five deals with this concept of unergründlichkeit as the central idea of Mish's whole philosophy, according to which the innermost essence of everyday life, out of which the forms of human creativity emerge, is the unfathomable. Terminologically, Mish uses interchangeably the unfathomable of the universe, the unfathomable meaning of all being and the inscrutable of the divine base of the universe. It is not out of negligence, however, that he did so. Rather, he wished to emphasize the point that it cannot be given a proper name in the sense of the attribution of definite properties to it, the knowledge of which would basically be possible depending only on adequate preparations. Misch believed that uh, the error of traditional metaphysics or ontology was to attempt to deduce the universe from a final principle. In this sense, Misch does not endorse metaphysics. At the same time, Koenig rightly conceives the unfathomable as the object of Misch's metaphysics. Insofar as in his view, Misch's point is the conviction that if someone comes up with the claim of metaphysical knowledge, what this knowledge is in reality about is precisely the unfathomable that appears in various forms, neither of which can exhaust it. Recalling the historical examples of a pantheist system, we can see the prefiguration of this unfathomable in the transcendent within the immanent, the main example of which 
was Spinoza's inexhaustible substance that appears in an infinity of attributes. That there, there is such a transcendence within the immanent is vicious. He believes that, I put, the really real cannot be found in the beyond of what happens in time as its home. Rather, this beyond is what it is as it is in what happens in time, in this empirical reality as the being that can neither be thought out as something fictitious, nor be thought through to the end, but must be lived through by the human being and the potential. As a kind of conclusion, one can certainly expect that the great emphasis put on the idea of an imminent transcendence in philosophy will end up in the refusal of all religiosity. However, the philological facts do not support this suspicion, at least not in this simple form. Instead of this, we can see an alternative form of secularized religiosity as Mises considered opinion. He believed that people who develop the proper manners of being attached to the unfathomable as this or that divine being are liberated to paradigmatic paradigmatically new deeds that transpose in reality in always new ways that which is essentially inexhaustible by your thinking be it even religious. This activity is what Mish may have considered religiosity without dogmas, an attitude that he described as an idea in Dilthey's historical systematic manner in the book length chapter on Abelard, Petrus Abelardus and Eloise in his history of autobiography in the sections dedicated to the interpretation of Eloise's religiosity. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for your patience and attention. attention. Thank you, too. Thank you, uh, Professor Boros. Uh, it's... Uh, this type of perspective that you are, have provided us with um, I mean, the contrasts, uh, I'm talking about the contrasts. Uh, uh, shall we move on to the point. questions then? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I'll just type. We can move on to the questions, I was saying. Uh... I, I want to try, uh, I tried to raise my hand, but unfortunately, uh, okay, can I, uh, can I ask a question? Yes, yes sure. sure. Uh, okay, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Professor Ross, uh, for your uh, talk. Uh, yes, there are many things to talk, uh, actually. Uh, uh, I, I am familiar to uh, Husserl and uh, Heidegger uh, philosophy uh, and also a little bit uh, Delta uh, philosophy, not Mish. Uh, so uh, uh, I have some question. Maybe uh, first I can ask uh, one of them or two of them later. Uh, I continue to ask the other question after the uh, other uh, participant question. So, uh, if uh, I correctly understand, uh, uh, Mish uh, taught uh, Husserl phenomenology uh, and also Heidegger uh, fundamental ontology um, is a different version or a different version of classical ontology. Am I right? Yes, uh, absolutely. Okay. Uh, so, but if we think like this, if, if uh, I mean, if we think uh, Heidegger philosophy is a 
different version of ontologic, uh, classical ontology. So, uh, uh, I think we should put, we should throw uh, his philosophy into garbage in from his point of view because he, he criticized all the time. He said he uh, his philosophy rely on is relies on uh, the critic of deconstruction of uh, classical metaphysics or ontology. So uh, I am curious, what do you think about Mish critic of uh, of uh, Heidegger and uh, Husserl concerning this point? Maybe I agree with Mish uh, concerning Husserl because, uh, for instance, Heidegger. Uh, criticize Husserl philosophy by saying that he philosophizes in the horizon of Kantian philosophy. Maybe not uh, classical metaphysics, but subject center metaphysics. Yes, maybe we can say uh, Husserl phenomenology uh, is still committed to subject center metaphysics, uh, which is first defended by. Uh, Descartes, but different version defended by Kant. Uh, maybe I agree with him concerning this point, but uh, 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 Reda, I'm curious what do you think about his critic of Heidegger? Because if <laughs> if he is right, so we should <laughs> throw the uh, uh, Heidegger's philosophy into garbage. Uh, you know, his his philosophy is totally based on uh, critic of uh, classic metaphysics. Yeah, yes. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, these are very deep uh, remarks and, uh, and uh, uh, thoughts uh, relating deeply on, on the issue uh, at stake. Yeah, yes. Uh, well, uh, it's, a, it's a complex issue. The whole issue is very complex. Yeah. Uh, um, yes, uh, certainly. I mean, I would say that Mis misunderstood uh, uh, Heidegger's point. Yes, sure. Bec but it is, it is quite understandable, I, I, I think. Uh, uh, I mean, there wasn't any the publication of Heidegger uh, the, and the dance book on dance, dance Scotus, and then the being in time. So if we, if, if we imagine mm -hmm. what would we react to just having being in time uh, without any anything that we have mm -hmm. later. You know, this is the perspective of, of, of mm -hmm. Mish. Just the being and time, uh, and so uh, and, and 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 knowing that Heidegger was an assistant to Husserl, mm -hmm. uh, where, where, while we think that Husserl is somehow uh, uh, somehow trapped, let's say trapped in the uh, uh, in the classical ontologies. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, even say, even involving Kant <laughs> makes the whole issue more, even more complex <laughs> because mm -hmm. Husserl, Husserl refuses Kant in his letter to to Dieter, whereas we we all know that uh, that uh, the later uh, version of his phenomenology is a transcendental phenomenology based on on critic on, on Kant's uh, critical thought. So I mean it's. Uh, it's, a, it's a strange uh, issue, mm -hmm. uh, but so, uh, I, so I, I think Mish misunderstood uh, 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 Heidegger, partly due to the uh, to the um, limited knowledge of uh, of his ideas, uh, and, and in, in the in the in the fourth part where uh, he he. Uh, interpreted already the, the the Kant book, the Kant on the problem of metaphysics, and the the two uh, short uh, shorter papers. Mm -hmm. So there, there he 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 he, he I, I think he understood a bit better 
what 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 was at stake in Heidegger, mm. and uh, and uh, it is interesting that uh, we have a, a letter from Heidegger to Miss. Mm. So it 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 would certainly be a a, a question uh, afterwards how Heidegger and Husserl reacted to this critic, mm. if ever. So, but. We have uh, we have a letter uh, from Heidegger to Misch from from 1931, mm. uh, where he he mentions that uh, that he he like that he he likes it part four of Misch books because uh, in in the end he he thinks Misch seems to come closer to an understanding to a correct understanding of of his position. And 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 at that time, after reading part four, uh, he uh, he 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 was almost convinced that uh, what what he himself Heidegger uh, understood uh, uh, by um, fundamental ontology, which which he, he interpreted as deconstruction of ont of traditional ontology, mm -hmm. yeah. So fundamental as deconstructive concerning the traditional. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and and Mises' uh, project of uh, of the of the logic of life, that uh, these two these two projects are, are perhaps the same. Mm -hmm. This is what Heidegger wrote mm -hmm. to Mises. Uh, so, uh, I think he missed many points in Heidegger philosophy because uh, I. He focused on uh, only one layer of uh, uh, Heidegger philosophy. I think Heidegger philosophy uh, has, uh, uh, you know, for multiple layer. For instance, uh, Heidegger, uh, of course, sa he says yes uh, uh, from one uh, standpoint. We can say classical philosophy, uh, classical ontology, it's okay, but it is not fundamental. Uh, uh, for instance, when he uh, uh, Heidegger criticized uh, classical conception of uh, time, classical conception of truth, he always criticized this conception by saying that this classical philosophy focuses on only uh, one aspect of time, one aspect of truth, but their conception is not fundamental. First, we should we should decode this concept by uh, by uh, finding out the fundamental layer. Based on this fundamental layer, we can explain the other layer. That's why, of course, the classical conception of truth is okay, but it is not fundamental. Classical conception of time is okay, uh, but it's not fundamental. I think uh, Misch missed this uh, multiple layer of Heidegger, uh, Heidegger's thought, uh, I think. Uh, this, yes. Yes, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I mean, uh, to be honest, uh, it was my paper. So, I mean, uh, the book uh, uh, comprises uh, 230 pages. So, mm -hmm. I, I, it is impossible in one one paper to to talk about uh, this. Yes. Uh, uh, I uh, emphasized uh, this layer, but uh, I think it is uh, it is an important layer uh, of Misch's critic, uh, also because. Uh, we have uh, not only this letter of Heidegger to Misch, but also we have uh, the, the remarks Heidegger made uh, on the on his example of Misch's book. So, so he he read the book uh, uh, with interest, uh, with, with serious, uh, in, in earnest. I mean, uh, and. Uh, and so he made uh, seven marks. And uh, those marks, uh, yeah, uh, 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 yeah, uh, correct, uh, in, in a sense, uh, a correct ambitious approach, what, uh, what, 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 he, what he, think, uh, he thinks uh, 
miss something that is there. So, I mean, for example, uh, uh, Mish uh, criticizes uh, the uh, the point of view of being as a static, uh, eternal mm -hmm. point of view, uh, 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 instead of uh, applying the dynamic uh, point of view of the philosophy of life, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and uh, and and uh, uh, these are the Heidegger's remarks are very short. So from time to time, uh, only question mark or, or or an exclamation mark or something. But but uh, then then he says uh, he says no, it is uh, it is just a uh, it is just a uh, misunderstanding of of of, of being uh, of how, uh, the way he uses being because he doesn't uh, use being as a aesthetic uh, eternal. Uh, uh, something, but but something dynamic, something uh, like uh, becoming, uh, and uh, and also the concept of truth. Yeah, the Mish criticized Heidegger uh, for for his concept of truth. He 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 maintains that he uh, he doesn't uh, um, root uh, anchors. The, the concept of truth in the uh, in 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 the in the life world, so to speak, mm, mm. Uh, in the everyday life. Mm. But Heidegger uh, re re remarks that 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 aletheia, the concept of aletheia, is precisely the this anchoring uh, in, uh, in 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 everyday life in the uh, everyday understanding, uh, etc. Uh, the concept of truth. Mm -hmm. So uh, this this is this is the way he reacts. So in this sense, uh, and and I think Heidegger is right. Of course, uh, if we read uh, from uh, almost one hundred years perspective, uh, of course we know that that Heidegger that he was he was right mm -hmm. in these remarks. But this was not. I mean, uh, which I, I, I don't think it is a, a simple mistake on on the part of me. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I, I mean, we should uh, we should uh, overview the um, the reviews of being and time from that period, and then then compare the the several. Uh, reviewers critiques with Mishas what and and in order to see what critical points of view were possible for the contemporaries mm -hmm. okay thank you thank you sir okay uh, comments Um, all right, as we, as I wait if, to see if there are any other questions, I'd like to just ask something. Um, I'm quite uh, unfamiliar uh, with these topics in general, so maybe I'm asking the obvious here, but um, either way, in Mish's uh, criticism of these major figures, um, is there like a common uh, ground an underlying uh, common cause to the criticism. The problem is that I couldn't. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think uh, today, unfortunately, I'll just write the chat box too. Um, uh, I am sorry for today's, I don't know why it's. I'm an underlying ground behind these criticisms. Uh, um, yes, uh, I see, I see. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, 
Sorry. Yes. Is it is it already finished? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think yes, yes, of course, uh, yes. Um, <clears throat> So the, 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 this, the, 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 this, this ground, I think, is the, is the, the shared conviction, the shared between uh, Rivtai and Mish, uh, that, uh, that the, the traditional philosophy was altogether direct oriented on, on to, uh, metaphysics, so this classical type of metaphysics, and uh, our ontology, and uh, what the, the task of philosophy now, at that time, was uh, according to this conviction, metaphysics, theory of knowledge, uh, and, uh, and psychology, but not the empirical psychology, that was starting at that time, but uh, but but that uh, 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 other type of uh, psychology Virtai was preparing, uh, uh, and so he, he they uh, they thought uh, they thought this this approach would uh, uh, would. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, be uh, adequate to uh, to to a a, 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 a li li lively concept of of human being. So because uh, it is a famous uh, quotation uh, uh, or a passage of data that that in 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 the human being analyzed by Kant and the others, uh, in in uh, there is no blood. Uh, only some, some, uh, uh, some water, water like liquid uh, 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 dignity, you know, as, as you as you remember from this. So this is this is this is a human being, not not just reason. Uh, and so, so this is what uh, what what both uh, Dita and Mish uh, were convinced convinced of, and, uh, and so 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 um, in a, in a latent way they were perhaps uh, uh, metaphysicians in a classical way. Uh, and that's why I, I, I came to talk about pantheism in the end, because they 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 were pantheists in a in a in a way. Uh, so they presuppose some some sort of pantheistic uh, metaphysics, if you like. But they they were not uh, accepting it. They were not uh, uh, endorsing in a. Uh, in a final, in a complete manner. So Dita wrote papers uh, on pantheism and the development of pantheism uh, that were collected in 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 book uh, in volume two of, of 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 his collected writings, and 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 Mish was the editor of the book. Uh, so this is a huge. Book uh, filled up with uh, with papers on the on the development of pantheism, and uh, and this was somehow the the heir, heir of of this uh, inherited this this interest in in pantheism. So uh, I think the common ground <laughs> to 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 answer your questions in the question in the end. So I think the com common ground was. Was a sort of uh, uh, partly conscious, partly unconscious, uh, uh, insisting on the pantheism as as a classical metaphysical stance, uh, combined with the, the philosophy of life of a Dewey type, so not Nietzsche or not not Bergson type, a Dewey type uh, that. Um, 
the, the apex of, of which was the, the theory of the typology uh, of, of, of worldviews uh, in, in the UDI. And this was what, what Mish completed with the, the theory of the unfathomable. So I think this is what this is what they, they thought could be should be the, the, the basis of, of today philosophy. Uh, instead of the instead of the Platonist uh, ontological uh, approach to, to to philosophy. Is it something like the answer? Yeah, sure. I mean I, I I'm I'm trying to learn it from you, so that's the, I mean uh, as I said, it's difficult uh, to get all these perspectives into one thing um, of this. So that's yeah. yeah, that was an answer to my question. Thank you, yeah. uh, Ardolaj. I think I see your hands now. Yes, uh, thank you, thank you, Sham. Uh, uh, my uh, my question, yes, I have a two question, but uh, following this part, uh, Mish uh, pantheistic perspective is not really clear for me. Uh, yes, he tried to combine pantheism with uh, philosophy of life. But his pantheism is not like Spinoza's uh, pantheism, right? Maybe, you know, tomorrow we'll talk about Spinoza's philosophy, pantheism. But uh, did, because uh, a, when we look at the uh, Spinoza's pantheism, uh, we cannot open a place for uh, for freedom, you know, yes, he talk about freedom, but <laughs> it is not really, <laughs> you know, freedom. But uh, philosophy of life uh, put life uh, at the center of philosophy. That's why uh, it opens uh, a place for freedom, agent action. So uh, yeah, that's why his uh, pontistic view is not clear for me. Uh, so can can you clarify a little bit uh, this point, uh, please? Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, um, I, I mentioned Spinoza uh, only on behalf on my own behalf. I mean, it was not uh, on Mish's behalf. I I I I, I, mm -hmm. have it, I have it in in a paper even that uh, that uh, that Mish uh, refers to Schelling, not to Spinoza. Yes, and precisely because uh, the, the, the because what what you were talking about you have been talking about now yeah sure uh, because uh, uh, the uh, yeah Schelling himself criticizes Spinoza of course at the beginning of the of the Freiheitsschrift on, on the uh, essence of of human freedom uh, yeah. Yes, precisely for these uh, reasons uh, you, you you mentioned already. Also, also mentioned. yes. So in this sense, uh, um, uh, the pantheism what what we could uh, connect to to Mish uh, is not Spinoza's pantheism. I mentioned only Spinoza because uh, the structure of the unfathomable and the and what 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 appears. Uh, similar uh, in uh, analogous uh, in Mish as Koenig reconstructs it. So <laughs> it is not Mish, Mish's own treatise on pantheism. Mm. This is this is a special problem that Mish uh, didn't uh, uh, write a, a, a treatise on pantheism or or, or or on his own philosophy as mm. such. So I mean and that's why we we try or I try to to reconstruct what what he might have in mind. <clears throat> so um, so so I I mentioned Spinoza only uh, in this context that his concept of substance and his concepts of concept of attributes uh, has have have, have the, the similar relations to relation to. Um, Misha's concept of unfathomable and what appears as the 
world views as the as the as the special typical world views uh, that uh, mentioned uh, by Liutai when when he talked about the world views in 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 the in the final phase of his life. So that was only the reason. Okay. So uh, on the other hand, so his pantheism, if we can uh, talk about it, if if you agree with me or if colleagues agree with me that that we can, uh, then uh, then it is as it is as the shelling type mm. uh, pantheism rather than the than the or Bruno type. Mm. Uh, because uh, I mean, uh, already in 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 Diotai's papers on pantheism in this uh, volume two of, uh, of of the collected works of of, of Diotai, he uh, emphasizes uh, Bruno uh, much much. I, I I wouldn't say much more than Spinoza because uh, it's precisely uh, uh, Mish wrote the, the the preface to the this volume two. And and there he mentions that uh, mentioned that uh, Dieter, uh wanted to to write a book on Spinoza and several uh, papers of that, that volume uh, served as preparations for this book of Dieter on Spinoza, mm -hmm. but he, that he didn't he didn't write this book. So I mean he he he. Had a, yeah, he, he thought, uh, in, in my way, I mean, I, I construe Diotai's historical connections uh, uh, as opposed to Husserl's historical connections uh, uh, like this. Uh, uh, Husserl, as we know, was a Cartesian, Cartesian in, in a or in, in quotation yes. quotation marks, yeah. So so Husserl was a Cartesian. Descartes was an important figure for him. Or Leibnizian, the monad monadic uh, structure of, 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 of the human human subjectivity is also important for him. But okay. not Spinoza's. Deity Deity uh, uh, emphasized the rather. The pantheist thinker, thinkers and Spinoza, especially. So I think this is a hidden, a hidden uh, trait in 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 Dutai and and perhaps also in Mish, the the, the Spinoza connection. And uh, but 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 as for Mish's uh, pantheism within the philosophy of life, you are completely right. Uh, it is uh, it is Schelling and Bruno. Perhaps uh, much more than uh, than Spinoza. Yes, yes, yes you're right. Uh, uh, can, uh, can I ask uh, the other question, uh, Sinan Sure, sure. Yeah. Yes, the, this is the most, uh, my last question, uh, uh, sir. Uh, yes, you uh, you mentioned. Um, uh, uh, Mish, uh, uh, Mish point of view uh, concerning the origin of philosophy. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I think he uh, he defended the uh, pluralistic view uh, regarding this point, the origin of philosophy. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure. Maybe he's right. But here, uh, I think there, for us, not for Mish, for uh, I think for all. Uh, thinker uh, or philosopher, there is a uh, there is a crucial qu question problem. Uh, I think we give uh, uh, more important privilege to philosophy. That's why we sh we said uh, we we try to uh, uh, prove that uh, Confucianism, Buddhism, etc., all of them are philosophy. Maybe Heidegger is right. Maybe uh, we should uh, we should assign the the concept of philosophy to only the uh, Greek version of philosophy and its uh, tradition. Maybe, uh, for instance, uh, Heidegger uh, doesn't call his own philosophy his own unquote philosophy philosophy. As you know, he 
call it a thought, not philosophy. That's why, you know, you know the, uh, the story. Maybe, for instance, Confucius, Buddha, etc. they are not philosophers, but maybe they are sophos. You know, for instance, they are really, uh, maybe we can say they are sophos, not philosophers. So why uh, maybe uh, 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 yes, now there are many debates concerning this issue. There, uh, especially Carl Jasper create a concept, axial age, etc. Uh, so under this uh, concept, we cover whole thought uh, at that time uh, as a philosophy. Uh, I don't know, I'm not sure uh, concerning this point, maybe uh, Heidegger is right. We should think they are thoughts, uh, but not philosophy. Uh, we should assign the concept of philosophy only to the style of Greek uh, thought. Maybe, I'm not sure. What do you think? Uh, I'm curious about uh, this point. Yeah, uh, I, I understand. Uh, I think I understand uh, perfectly your, 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 your point and, uh, uh, and the problems uh, with this uh, special way of uh, using the expressions, especially the philosophy. Yes, uh, I mean, concerning Misha's own version, uh, this was not very well informed because uh, he spent uh, two months or so in China, Japan, India. So it was not enough. He, he didn't know uh, uh, any, any, any of the languages. Those texts were written. Uh, and so, uh, um, measured by uh, contemporary today standards, uh, his his knowledge of these uh, thinkers was not uh, real, real knowledge. It was from translations and from momentary impressions uh, he he received uh, in this short journey. So it was not a not a real knowledge. But it, uh, on the other hand, it is a conceptual, re really a conceptual question uh, for this uh, or for that time and, and or for all time too. Um, and and I, I can talk, absolutely accept your suggestion, your 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 uh, uh, recommendation that that we 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 say uh, we philosophy is what we have in Europe after the. <clears throat> after the ancient period. Uh, and then there are other thinkers in, in all around the world who can be uh, 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 designated and as thinkers. Uh, yeah, I, I can absolutely live with it. So, <laughs> but uh, uh, as you also know, so today, uh, today's trends tendencies uh, go into an, an opposite di direction. So we uh, discover uh, uh, other types of philosophy and we say them philosophy, they are philosophy, uh, expanding the canon. Yeah, this is the, the, uh, the, this, the, the main uh, slogan for, for, for this, uh, this activity. And uh, uh, on the one hand, we we we, we uh, uh, discover the the the, the suppressed uh, philosophy of, of women uh, uh, be, beyond the philosophy uh, that was always a, a an issue for for men, uh, but not not women. So now we expand the canon. We are writing the history of women. And philosophers and philosophies, uh, we 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 discover discover uh, the native American people's philosophy. Mm -hmm. uh, even the there is <clears throat> there is this famous uh, handbook the uh, in the in the last. Uh, Years of the nineteenth uh, century by by the Swiss
Okay. <laughs> so uh, it, it means that now uh, philosophy becomes uh, even more uh, uh, scattered and, uh, than 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 in the time of uh, of Mich, Mich, the debate uh, of Mich and Heidegger and Husserl. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can I just do a little quick follow up on that? Uh, when you am I being frozen? Let me first ask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, when you suggest maybe you know the ancient Greek philosophy should be the um, properly called the philosophy. Isn't it in virtue of the way philosophy, I mean, the, isn't it in virtue of the way it is done? Are we like throwing these categories uh, between philosophies in virtue of the way they are done? Uh, you ask uh, the question to Professor Burroughs, right? Um, I, I mean, he, it's actually uh, drawn up from your suggestion to, yes, uh, Professor Boros, when, um, when we talk about is this, I mean, if, if this is going to be a topic of conversation, whether this should be included as philosophy, that should not be included as philosophy, etc. Um, what's the principle here? Isn't it, is it in virtue of the way that it is done? Um, or in virtue of what is aimed to be learned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it's a... It's a difficult question. I mean, uh, yeah, there are, again, two layers. Uh, the one uh, is uh, the time, uh, concerning the time of mission, and Heidegger's debate. And the other is today. Today is debate. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah. I, I the, the, uh, one one problem is that I, I don't know the African or Native American philosophy, or what is what is today considered as as, as African or Native American philosophy. So I I cannot. I cannot say, I'm just unable to say in virtue of what uh, they, these, these, uh, I don't know, perhaps oral, not even, not even written uh, texts, but some, some, some traits of oral teaching, like Socrates teaching, I don't know, um, is considered as African philosophy or native American. Now I, ha I have a colleague from from uh, Hawaii University who who uh, applied for a Fulbright scholarship to my university. It's <laughs> it's an interesting <laughs> project in itself, but but uh, the, the 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 main topic or one of the main topics uh, he offered for us and the, for the Fulbright Commission. Uh, was the the, the native uh, American, yeah, philosophers or thinkers? I can't remember the uh, the, the expression. Uh, they 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 uh, did effect uh, on on the first American philosophers, so Santayana, Emerson, uh, etc. So uh, he he, yeah yeah. He, he certainly knows, and, and as, 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 as I was informed uh, in the United States nowadays, it, it's, it's an important, also in Canada, it's, it's, nowadays it is an important issue to, um, to involve the native ways of, of thinking into, the, into conversation with, with, with traditional philosophies. So, mm -hmm. uh, Yes, but but I don't know I don't, I don't know in virtue of what uh, they they they, they yes. consider. They mm. consider uh, I think there are some philosophers. They they say uh, Sinamo Japanese uh, philosophy. 
<laughs> is already done. But uh, I don't agree with the with this philosopher because yes, partially it's done because uh, uh, yes, uh, at that time philosophy covered many you know branch, uh, including physics and the other things that that's why you know uh, its uh, function uh, was different from uh, today's uh, you know uh, uh, its function. But still, I think we need philosophy. For instance, especially concerning, uh, you know, uh, concerning philosophy of life, ethics, uh, and we cannot reduce. Uh, for me, uh, this is my point of view. We cannot reduce philosophy to only an intellectual branch uh, that uh, clarifies some key concept of special uh, exact uh, science. Especially, you know, uh, in uh, some, uh, 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 you know, uh, between some philosophers, especially New Kantian uh, perspective, that there are some contemporary philosophers they follow this New Kantian perspective. So philosophy uh, uh, we can uh, clarify only some uh, <laughs> some co basic concepts, some uh, basic problems of some specific. Uh, uh, science, yeah. uh, but what, uh, for instance, ethics, morality, uh, and uh, the other uh, uh, part of, for instance, metaphysics, uh, etc. So this kind of things, I think, uh, cannot be uh, solved, cannot be clarified uh, by specific science. Uh, uh, I think when we talk about morality, <laughs> life, etc. We don't talk about only formally. We talk about the content of this kind of things. That's why I think we need still philosophy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. I, I agree completely. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah sure. Um, yeah. Look, if we just go back to Mish, uh, this is. The last question I have, uh, if we go back to, Mich in, in, if I understand correctly, he endorses a global perspective uh, and therefore wants to uh, introduce uh, Chinese thought, um, etc. as <laughs> philosophy as well, and should be treated as such, right? That's his perspective. Um, mm, yes and no, because uh, um, uh, he 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 thinks uh, or he thought uh, Indian and Chinese uh, thought uh, went hand in hand with Greek thought um, until Socrates. But from Socrates on, uh, they, 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 they parted their ways. I mean, they parted. So the, the, the Greek uh, thought became uh, what what we uh, now uh, uh, now as uh, as philosophy. So uh, um, bothered with uh, science, scientific knowledge, and and the, uh, yeah, the, the, the science sciences uh, uh, departed uh, from this philosophy too. So, I mean, the, the, the Socratic uh, uh, ancient uh, philosophy was the was somehow the basis for the uh, becoming uh, independent of the science sciences later, but not the not not the Indian or or Chinese uh, way ways of uh, original philosophy. Um, uh, that's why uh, they um, took over what they. Had in Europe or what we had in Europe as sciences, so they they didn't develop their own sciences. But uh, when 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 they started uh, uh, to communicate with uh, with Europe, then they they took over the theoretical uh, part of uh, our thinking, our philosophy, our sciences. Uh, um, and and they wanted to com complement somehow their original thought. Yeah, let's use this word, thought or th thinking. So they had their the, the original thought thinking, which was uh, the same from Confucius, uh, Lao Tzu, 
or or, or Buddha's uh, period to 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 the twentieth century, uh, according to Mish. So they had this traditional uh, thought, but then they they took over the, the West Western European sciences that were the fruits of the Western type of philosophy, what what we have uh, as as a, as 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 a consequences of of the uh, of the of the Western type of um, the Western development of uh, of philosophy. So this is what what he what he means. So philosophy we have only in Europe, but the but the basis of uh, of, of of philosophy and the other types of uh, thought uh, were laid in 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 a global scene. So not not only in Greece and 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 especially not in Greece. Right? The Greek philosophy is already a consequence somehow uh, an effect. Uh, of 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 what uh, happened earlier. Okay, thank you for the clarification, and thank you for the all the answers and the talk. Uh, uh, hope to see you tomorrow. <laughs> thank you so much for uh, your attention and patience, and then uh, yeah, I I hope we. Well, we uh, we will meet uh, tomorrow personally uh, in Gestapo. Yeah, Gestapo. Yes. Uh,